Hi everyone, Dr. Mike here. Let's talk about phospholipids. Now you've probably heard of phospholipids as being the backbone of cells. It actually creates the cell membranes of all the 30 trillion cells in our body. So it plays a very important role in keeping things in the cell and also not letting things come into the cell from outside or leak out of the cell as well. Now when we look at phospholipids, there's two parts of the word, phospho and lipid. Now, in one of my previous videos, I spoke about fats or lipids, and I told you that they're hydrophobic. That means they dislike water significantly. And the reason why is because there's all of these carbons and all of these hydrogens, and together, they hate water, hydrophobic. But what you're gonna find is molecules that have huge amounts of oxygen tend to like water. That's why the carbohydrates, which had just as many oxygen molecules as it did carbon molecules, actually quite like water and can mix in with water quite well. Now when we look at a phospholipid, let's compare it to a triglyceride. Remember, I spoke in the previous video that a triglyceride is the way that our body stores fats. And it's made up of a glycerol backbone, that's the glycerol here, three carbons, you can see the hydrogens, and three oxygens, and it's attached to three individual fatty acids. And I told you it can be many different types of fatty acids. They can be saturated, monounsaturated, or polyunsaturated fatty acids. And depending on the quantity of each of those depends on whether it's going to be a liquid or solid at room temperature. So this is a triglyceride. It doesn't like water because there's not many oxygen molecules. There's a huge amount of carbons and hydrogens here with the fatty acids, big long hydrocarbon chains. Now let's compare this to a phospholipid. Now let's look at the similarities first. There's a glycerol backbone, that's the same. So you can see the three carbons, the hydrogens, and the oxygens, and it's still got two fatty acids attached to it, but in the position where the third fatty acid would attach in the triglyceride, what we have is a phosphate group attached in. And you can see that this phosphate group has a large amount of oxygens attached to it as well, and attached to that is a nitrogen group as well. Now what this means is that because of this additional phosphate group, one part of this molecule loves water and the other part of this molecule hates water. And it actually arranges itself in a way that looks like this, where the phosphate pops itself away from the rest and creates a phosphate head. And then those two fatty acids form two fatty acid tails. And that means that we have a part of a phospholipid that loves water, that's the phosphate head, and a part of a phospholipid that hates water, that's the fatty acid tails. Now what that also means is when we've got heaps of these phospholipids, they will spontaneously arrange themselves in a way in which the phosphate head is exposed to the liquid environment and the fatty acid tails are actually embedded deep within each other and they're not exposed to the liquid. And what that means is ultimately, I'll quickly grab a pen, is that if I were to draw this up with a phosphate head fatty acid tail, they'll arrange themselves in a way, these are all the phosphate heads, and then the fatty acid tails coming in like this, and it creates a bilayer in which you get two layers. So there's the first layer, then the second layer in which the tails of the next molecules are going to be talking to each other or in close proximity, and then the phosphate head on the inside like that. So what that actually means is now we've got the membrane of a cell in which out here is water, and that's cool because the phosphate heads are talking to it, and inside here is water, and that's cool because the phosphate heads are talking to it as well. And so this is the importance of phospholipids when creating a cell membrane.